Well, howdy diddly dandy there, Chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, Chums, I'm going to be talking about No Man's Sky, I mean, you can probably guess, because it's by me, but it's not so much about No Man's Sky, but what happens if most of the development shifts over to light, no fire, is that going to leave a large gap in the sci-fi market next year, or the year after, whenever it launches? Anyway, I get on to my concerns. Let me make something a little bit larger in the background here. So behind me are a load of fantasy style games that I'm looking forward to in 2024, people. So I'll just hit play on this. So this one playing in the background right now is Blue Protocol. It's got that same sort of graphical art style. It's quite cartoony, quite artsy fartsy. This one is actually free to play. The only concern that I have from this one being Namco Bandai, that it might have microtransactions in there, it might become sort of, you know, pay to win sort of scenarios. It's got quite a lot of different sort of skills inside of this one. Uh, it, it's got a lot of different classes. It's got a fair bit of skill involved in it as well. And it looks freaking awesome. But what I'm worried about is this sort of game that is going to be like a free to play and it's more service orientated. With No Man's Sky being a one-off purchase, and there's no commitment to whether they have to bring out updates, you know, there's no season pass, there's no microtransactions, opposed to this one, which is going to be heavily evolved based on how many players invest in it, there's going to be seasonal updates in this one, guaranteed, to get the next hook to get players to spend a bit more cash on some cosmetics. So, I know that with Blue Protocol, I'm going to have a constant stream of content to cover. It says they're coming in 2023. It is. It's being released in December in Japan. And it's got an early release window or first season over here in the UK. And I am thoroughly looking forward to bringing this one to my channel, despite the microtransaction complications, mainly because I love the art style and the fact that you get to create your own character right from the off. And it's very open worldy. The player hubs don't look overly busy and the HUDs themselves look OK. So, yeah, this one, fingers crossed, is going to deliver. I'm interested in this one, Blue Protocol. But it's a very much a sci-fi-esque game. It has got some technological weapons in and a couple of robots as well that appear from time to time. So that one has thoroughly spiked my interest. There's quite a few games that are sort of... You know, fantasy stylish it's like this one this one on the screen right now is called pal world and it looks like a pokemon clone from the off but i love the fantasy style world i like the fact that you use like little pokemon -y type creatures to glide on or pals as they're called in this but what sets this apart is it's got grenades it's got grappling hooks it's got freaking machine guns it's got rocket launchers it's got all sorts of stuff and when you actually capture these little guys you take them back to your home area and you get them to build a base for you yeah you chuck these little guys into slavery and you can also cross breed them to make freaking magical beasts like that so i think this one's got quite a lot going for it now this one releases in january of next year apparently on pc at least i don't know about console but this is something that i'm definitely going to be picking up and playing and giving it a bash but again it's fantasy style with guns basically and yeah i i think this one has ticked quite a lot of boxes for me i mean some of it looks a little bit dark and disturbing to be honest especially since you can put these little critters on like a <laughs> construction line to make you an arsenal of weapons <laughs> <laughs> just what? It just looks like it's going to make me laugh every minute. I mean, that he was just firing eggs out the backside of a big bird creature there. Yeah, this one could be fun. I think this, alongside of my um, sort of narration style, could be pretty much a marriage made in heaven. So that's coming to my channel, hopefully, people. Power World, so look out for that. Yeah, you can go and watch a couple of videos on that, see how you feel about it. But again, it's a fantasy style, artsy sort of game. This one behind me right now is called Nightingale. And again, it's got its own sort of art style to it. It's very cyberpunk. It's very Victorian-esque. And it's also got an element of procedural generation. It's like that skybox that you just saw there. Freaking heavenly. Basically, what you do is you get these tarot cards. Where you get blueprints for the tarot cards. And you have to craft them and ink them and stuff like that. And then you put them inside of a portal. 
into like a portal sort of generator. Pull a handle, boom, almost. And it, it generates you a weld on the opposite side. It's like you can get a card that's going to give you infinite daylight if you don't like nighttime and all the nighttime creatures that that brings. So you can make it perpetual daylight if you've got that card. Or you can make a forest if you've got that card or your desert, etc, etc. Craft all your own Victorian garb. Very steampunk. Very awesome. It's got giant freaking fauna in it. Some of them are very hostile. Some of them not so hostile unless you really tick them off. It's very whimsical and magical and lovely, and I was actually honoured enough to get to play some of the early play access to this game, and I did thoroughly enjoy my time with it. So that's coming to my channel, and that's coming in February. February 22nd, I believe, people. So yeah, not so long after my birthdays. So hopefully I'll be bringing this to my channel. Then again, No Man's Sky usually gets a February update, so I may be bringing this out in staggered moments alongside of my No Man's Sky sort of content. But look at that, glide down giant freaking faunas it ticks all the boxes for me this game it's got the open worldy element it's got procedural elements it's got giant fauna it's got some crafting elements it's got that chilled relaxed vibe with moments of sheer freaking chaos so yeah this one is definitely one that i want to bring to my channel oh the idea of this one is as you're randomly generating portals you're trying to get back to what's called nightingale it's like a safe haven almost looks like a tesla sort of create like a nicholas tesla not like the elon musk tesla but Nicholas Tesla, yeah, the sort of safe haven, protected city by all these electrobes. Looks pretty darn freaking excellent, people. Okay, so this game in the background right now shouldn't need too much of an introduction. This one is Dragon's Dogma 2. And I was a massive fan of Dragon's Dogma 1. I've done a full playthrough of Dragon's Dogma 1. I even platinumed the game. I loved it that much. The only other game that I've cared so much to platinum is No Man's Sky. So yes, this is made by Capcom. And it's a fully immersive world. It's not massively, massively open in the same sense as some of the others that I've previewed. It's got a massive map, though. The map is about four times larger than the original map from the original Dragon's Dogma. Now, what I love about this is the actual live combat and the the way that you can chain things together to really make your class stand out. The actual combat in this is freaking second to none. I liked it more than Monster Hunter, to be honest, people. And the actual creatures and the way they're realised into the world, and they can just appear at any time. You could be taking a merry little walk across a path that you've taken a path walk on like a hundred times. And then a dragon flies down and a freaking griffin or something starts fighting in front of you or something. And you, oh god, it's, it's mental. It's really, really cool. It's really, really immersive. It's got lots Lots of sort of Greek mythos in there as well and strangeness. The story is usually a little bit cheesy, but I kind of love the cheesiness of this. It really is awesome. It's like watching a Japanese anime and you've been sucked into it, but it's like an anime game that's been ported to the West. It's got very Western sort of foundations. You've just got to play it. The first one was amazing. You can pick it up for under a tenner at the moment. And trust me, it still stands the test of time because it's got some unique systems in it, like a pawn system, where you can actually create like an AI pawn that other players can actually rent out and take with them on sort of quests and then give them gifts to bring back to you when you log in the next day. And look at the size of this giant. This has got sort of Shadow of the Colossus vibes, and I love Shadow of the Colossus. Anyway, where am I going with all this, people? There are so many fantasy-style games coming out in 2024 that No Man's Sky, for me, is going to be the only sci-fi game I'm playing. I might still hit up a little bit of Starfield from time to time, but it's going to be a rarity because I'm, I'm a little bit disinterested and disfranchised with Starfield until they bring out maybe some DLC for it. I'm just not enjoying the main quest lines or the character that I've created, or the actual guild that I'm with, the, the, the constellation. I just find no kinship with it. The story itself is just hollow for me. So yeah, No Man's Sky is the only real sci-fi game that I'm going to be playing next year. And this one, this one has really hit my radar. This one is called Towers of Azkabar. And although that the new game from Hello Games is an open worldy sort of game, this one looks like that too. This one's got so many different biomes, so many different bosses, so many different draws of interest. Look at those hand type creatures there. It almost looks like Zelda meets Skyrim meets Dark Cloud, some of my favorite adventure games of all time. And the idea is this, this world has been plunged into desolateness and the shadows taken over and completely ripped it and made it barren like this. And you and your mates come along with your little woodland masks on, looking like you've just been ripped straight out of Peter Pan. 
and rebuild the world back up and breathe life back into it and come across majestic beasties like this that's so in a narrative and a story for you to follow. It looks freaking lovely. This has got never-ending story type vibes for it for me. And I love that film growing up. So yeah, I'm going to be jumping into this one as soon as this one comes available. Sadly, the uh, news for this one is a bit scarce. I've joined their Discord and even over on there, the developers are chiming in and talking to the people, but they're very tight-lipped on when this is going to drop. But yeah, this is one that I'm watching massively. So this is yet another fantasy-style artsy game that um, Hello Games is going to be up against when they finally do release their game. And I don't know whether they're going to be releasing their game in 2024 or 2025. I don't know whether Hello Games is releasing Light No Fire on multiple platforms either. It's, it's very sparse on information at the moment, people. I will let you know as and when I find things out. But just like their game, Light No Fire, you can swim underwater as well. There's lots of sorts. And this one shows a fair bit more combat. I mean, let's face it. And you've also got the glider in this too, a bit like Light No Fire. If Light No Fire and this launches at the same time, I'd be interested to see where each camp sits, because I feel this is a serious contender for Light No Fire. And for whatever reason, this video has only got like thousands of views, not millions, even though I think this one is just as groundbreaking in a roundabout way. I mean, I don't know how big the world is or what the selling point is for this or its amount of hype. But trust me, this one has really got my interest. And it says coming 2024 at the top there, people. Coming 2024. So yeah, I've already wish-listed. And uh, I'm watching that one quite carefully. So Light No Fire is the only other one that I've got inside of this uh, list here. And you should all be pretty familiar with this one at the moment. But I kind of feel that Light My Fire is now going to be taking some of the actual focus away from No Man's Sky. If it hasn't already over the last couple of years. And I say that mainly because No Man's Sky's updates when they have launched. Have launched with some very sort of very basic bugs that should have been found before it went out there inside the verse. So I don't know whether they've moved their main developers and their main artists over to light no fire and left maybe some of their newer sort of entry level people to just carry no man's sky through i don't want to actually put that out there because you know it's just a mere speculation i can't see in their office i can't see what's going on there all i can go by is the actual picture that sean murray put up during the actual game awards where he showed the 12 members of the team that are actually out there that are supposedly working on this title and some of those faces are quite familiar faces to the Hello Game studio. So there is that, you know, but I don't know whether they swap in and out of those people, you know, so anyways. But what I'm trying to say is No Man's Sky is my go to sci fi game other than maybe Cyberpunk. But Cyberpunk, I, I take that or leave it and I can't really bring it to my channel because it keeps getting content blocked by YouTube. So No Man's Sky is going to be my only go-to sci-fi game for my channel amongst a shed load of sci-fi games. I mean fantasy games. So I just want to give everybody there in the viewerverse the heads up that my channel is going to become very fantasy based. And that's not because of choice of my own. It's just because some of the best games coming out, in my opinion, for 2024 are fantasy style games if you find a sci-fi game that you feel needs my attention sound up in the comments let me know about it because i will be hitting it up there's a few other indie titles i want to bring to my channel but my main drive this year is is fantasy fantasy style games and most of them open worldy i hope you like some of these i hope it's put them on your radar and i hope to see you in the new year take care goodbye goodbye and goodbye again <laughs>